Our tech news is gluten-free and organic, but it's far from cruelty-free. We've been keeping a clone of Mark Zuckerberg in a cage under the studio for study. We just pad the walls so you can't hear him trying to be relatable. Two new mysterious Intel GPUs have been spotted on the SciSoft benchmark database, and enthusiasts are speculating they might be a part of Intel's upcoming Battle Mage lineup of gaming graphics cards. The listing was spotted by Michael on Twitter. You know Michael who implied that these chips may be more in the mid or budget range, given that they're eight megabytes of L2 cache and core counts of 20 and 24 Z cores respectively, are pretty low compared to Intel's existing Alchemist GPUs. However, both of the alleged battle mages feature about 12 gigabytes of VRAM, a configuration not shared by any existing Intel gaming card. But if the leaked performance numbers are to be believed, what battle mage does share with Alchemist is underdog syndrome, because both of the leaked GPUs performed significantly worse than both the ARC A770 and A750. But they kind of had to. How else are they going to generate headlines like new Intel driver brings 120% performance boost in Octodad? Back at CES 2024, Intel's Tom Peterson said most of the ARC GPU team had already moved on to the next generation, codenamed Celestial, with about 30% of the team fine-tuning Battle Mage, so it's all ready to launch in Q2 2024. That's this year. Unfortunately, we have no idea what he actually meant by that, due to the fact that Intel apparently made up their own language in which some dates translate to other dates that are eight months later. Florida has officially passed a law banning children under 14 from having social media accounts and requiring 14 and 15 year olds to have parental consent before joining. The ban isn't guaranteed to go into effect. Similar laws have been passed in Utah and Arkansas requiring parental permission for anyone under 18 to access social media, but these have been met with significant legal challenges. That's not just because there's a lot of corporate money riding on this issue, but also because requiring users to provide official documents for age verification in order to access Facebook is arguably a pretty substantial burden on their First Amendment right to freedom of assembly and speech. Florida legislators hope to avoid some of these hurdles by focusing on the addictive features endemic to social media platforms rather than the content that they contain. Children are vulnerable, and there's a strong argument that social media is harmful to them. I mean, just look at what it's doing to their parents. Gangs of moms roaming the streets. They've been radicalized. <laughs> That's only partially a joke. The new law also contains language that would require similar age verification systems for accessing adult websites, something which numerous other states have already done and which has been criticized by entities like, who else, Pornhub, for potentially pushing users to sketchier and sketchier sites rather than actually preventing children from accessing pornography. It's unclear, however, if the same principle applies to social media, whether 12-year-olds who can't participate in the latest TikTok trend will simply turn to obscure underground social media rings just to get their fix. Yeah, like Twitter. <laughs> Speaking of Snapchat, according to recently unsealed documents, between 2016 and 2019, Facebook had a secret program called Project Ghostbusters, where it spied on network traffic from Snapchat, and later, Amazon and YouTube. The documents were revealed as part of the discovery phase in a California class action lawsuit accusing Meta of using deceptive practices to collect user information. Back in 2016, Facebook was apparently looking to get an advantage over its competition by studying how users users interacted with rival companies. Of course, those companies used encryption, which was very inconsiderate of them. So instead, Facebook got its VPN-like subsidiary Onavo to create a wiretapping tool for Android and iOS that could be used to intercept and decrypt data from certain subdomains. You know, totally cool stuff. <laughs> is this malware? I need somebody to tell me if this is malware. To quote Pedro Canahuati, Facebook's then head of security engineering, I can't think of a good argument for why this is okay. <laughs> Onavo, incidentally, shut down in 2019 after it was uncovered that they were secretly paying teenagers to use the service in order to spy on them. <laughs> and Meta thought that rebrand worked, hey? <laughs> Yes, we spied on teenagers, but we paid them. Meta did not respond to requests for comment as at press time, Mark Zuckerberg was busy emailing employees in Google's AI division, asking them if they want to be his friends instead. 
We give him Wi-Fi access. Oh wait, no, we have a clone. It's not the real one. Speaking of friends. Speaking of friends, Riley and I aren't, but you Green's NotSync DXP480T can be your data's new best friend. So if you're currently your data's best friend and you buy this, things may get awkward. With a 12th gen Intel Core processor, it is fast and furious. No drifting though. Enjoy seamless downloads at lightning speeds with a 10 gigabit ethernet port, expandable memory of up to 16 terabytes, and dual Thunderbolt 4 ports that make managing data a breeze. Plus, you can use their AI Smart Assistant to easily organize your photos. Check out the Ugreen NASSYNC DXP480T Plus below and get 40% off until April 28th and up to 35% off after. We're not friends. Okay. Stop inviting me to things. <laughs> I didn't want to say this in front of the quick bits, but during the sponsor break, the Zucker clone ate Linus. Google has officially released a native version of Chrome for ARM-based Windows PCs, two months after an early version was spotted in Chrome's experimental Canary channel. The release comes ahead of this summer's expected release of Microsoft Surface devices powered by Qualcomm's much anticipated Snapdragon X Elite chips, or so the rumors go. Now, users of ARM-powered Windows devices, like the Surface Pro X, can also experience the speed of Google's browser and the ensuing pop-ups begging them to use Bing. TinyCorp has decided to make both AMD and NVIDIA versions of its TinyBox AI server. The company initially wanted to exclusively use AMD's Radeon RX 7900 XTX, criticizing NVIDIA's price and the closed source nature of CUDA, but after running into multiple driver and firmware issues using AMD's cards, TinyCorp are now also selling Team Green tiny boxes. You can save 10 grand by going with the AMD version though, provided you, quote, like to tinker and feel pain. Finally, a win for masochists. The exact opposite of what masochists want. Oh, they hate this, but they love it. Ah, it's perfect. A judge has ruled that the SEC can proceed in its lawsuit against crypto exchange Coinbase for allegedly trading in the unregistered sale of financial securities. Though in this case, the allegedly is less about whether or not the crypto that Coinbase sells is unregistered and more about whether or not crypto is a type of financial security and thus subject to SEC regulation. Coinbase's chief legal officer, Paul Grewal, has stated that the company will continue to fight the SEC in court and that they are confident in their legal arguments. Arguments such as, these aren't securities, because the buyer doesn't gain any rights like they do when they buy stocks. And cryptocurrencies are just collectibles, like Beanie Babies. I think people used to call those uh, investments too. Canva Inc. has acquired the Affinity Design Suite, which is a lot like Adobe, if Adobe wasn't an overpriced subscription con job. Okay. <laughs> it's true. Since its release, Affinity has offered perpetual licenses to customers under the crazy belief that people should own what they pay for. <laughs> what, are you doing? what are you talking about? But the buyout from Canva has some users afraid the software will switch to an Adobe-like subscription model. Canva has since pledged that perpetual licenses for Affinity will always be offered and you can trust them because no company, not a single one, has ever broken a promise they've made in the past. Go ahead. Name 100,000. And Amazon released a report detailing its fight against counterfeit products, which had the perhaps unintended consequence of also revealing just how bad the site's counterfeiting problem really is. According to Amazon, they blocked over 700,000 suspicious attempts to create seller accounts and identified over 7 million counterfeit products last year, up from 2 million in 2020. As part of these efforts, Amazon has partnered with brands and law enforcement, both foreign and domestic. It's honestly even got me nervous, given my lucrative side hustle in gooky handbags and la la lemon leggings. They just go with my style. I mean, it's, they're... You're so gooky. <laughs> oh, you are a gooky guy. And you should side hustle on back this Friday for more tech news. Now come quick or it'll get cold. The Zucker clone, it's escaped. No! <laughs> He's still hungry. Okay, nice job, guys. Um, can we just... Uh, oh, my God. Ah, what the...